Hey guys, good morning and welcome to another edition of Motorcyclist MC Commute. You guys know the deal. We're gonna be riding to the motorcyclist office in Southern California on Triumph's 2020 Street Triple RS. So let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. Well guys, here it is. Triumph's 2020 Street Triple RS. This is Triumph's middleweight sport naked bike. They've been making this motorcycle since 2007 and I've been lucky enough to ride pretty much every iteration of this bike. For 2020 they've made some technical improvements. They put some reshaped bodywork on it, new LED headlamps, did some modifications to the engine to make it Euro 5 compliant in Europe and give it a little bit more mid-range punch. But always liked this middleweight Triumph Sport Naked Bike. When it was a 675cc engine, I really liked it, and now as a 765, it continues to impress me. Uh, styling on this thing, I, I like how Triumph is sticking to the script, but this is not the best looking motorcycle. It looks kind of fugly to me. That headlight system, front fairing, almost looks like an appendage like it wasn't really meant for the bike conversely this tail i love the tail the tail is sleek it reminds me of the old daytona 675 sport bike and how sleek it is the new carbon fiber tip exhaust muffler under the motorcycle i love that very nice in terms of styling and performance but enough talking about this thing let's hop on it and see what it's like to ride all right guys here we go a mechanical key thank you triumph they make keyless style fobs for their scrambler 1200 and while some people like those things i do not i always want a mechanical key that you can stick in the fuel tank to open it and put in the ignition to start the motorcycle i always want that i don't care if it's 2020 or 2065 i love a mechanical key so good job and away we go guys Right away hopping on this Street Triple RS. These Triumph motorcycles, they haven't changed very much in terms of ergonomics. They've done slight tweaks over the years, but these bikes always feel the same, which is kind of a good thing. It's a very comfortable street bike. The seat is decently supported, isn't ridiculously high isn't crazy low either the foot pegs are relatively low so if you're a guy who has limited knee movement or you're really tall you're still going to be pretty comfortable on this bike handlebar has a nice street bike style bend there's a lot of not a lot but a decent amount of rearward sweep but the handlebar is a little bit old school in its shape when you're riding this triumph street triple rs it feels very much like an older style bike a lot of the new middleweight sport naked bikes are having a different ergonomics package which i would say is more contemporary this thing is more old school and conventional if you're a guy who wants the old school conventional classic motorcycle riding experience you will like the ergonomics of this bike and it works well but if you're looking for something cutting a cutting edge and really sporty this ergonomics package might not be the best for you overall i like it you know for day-to-day -day riding around the street it works really good and that's where these motorcycles really excel this street triple in every configuration ever made the suspension's always been really supple it goes over the bumps really well and delivers real favorable ride quality yet at the same time when the road gets twisty and it's time to start whaling this motorcycle is very 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 adept at whaling this Triumph Street Triple RS is powered by Triumph's 765cc i3. 12 valve cylinder head, dual overhead cam, 
This is a uh, evolution of the original 675 inline three, which Triumph introduced, I think in 2006, I think, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly. And that engine's awesome. To be honest with you, this 765 engine isn't that much different from that original engine. Yeah, it has more bore. Yeah, it has more stroke. We'll just skip ahead of these guys real quick. But it isn't that much different from a technical standpoint. And that's not a bad thing. Realistically, when Triumph released its, its i3 675cc engine for the 2006 or 7 model year, I think it was 6, that engine was very technically advanced. And all the character that was in that engine, that awesome three-cylinder roar, that, that incredible traction to the rear tire, all of those features are alive in this engine. There's a reason why other Japanese motorcycle or another Japanese motorcycle manufacturer, another Italian motorcycle manufacturer, chose to develop their own inline three. There's a reason for that. Because these engines are excellent. They're narrow, they are full of torque, they sound awesome, and you get just really good packaging for the size. Inline three engines rock. And this Triumph 765, 765 really is the innovator. It is the godfather of the inline threes, of the modern inline threes. Now, Triumph's updated this. This bike now has ride-by-wire. It has adjustable throttle mapping. And the throttle maps on it work decently well for sure. Triumph does a really good job of, of their uh, engineering and, and ride testing. You know, their testing regiment when it comes to prototype to production is second to none. Like these guys really hone in on the throttle response settings, the suspension calibration. Do They do a really great job, you know, at a level that is, you know, comparable to the top Japanese brands, which is nothing to scoff at for, for a smaller English brand. So the throttle response on this bike is, it's good, but it's not as good as the old throttle response on the original 675. That mechanical throttle response was just so accurate and so awesome. And you can really tell the difference in the throttle response when you're doing wheelies. You know, this thing still does great wheelies and it's really relatively easy to control. But God, that 675 engine, that thing was really, really easy to control. Right now we're in this main menu system which you can only use when the vehicle is stopped. Vehicle must be stopped to use it. Let's see what riding modes we're in. We have rider, rain, sport, road, track. Rider, rain, road, sport, and track. Let's put it in sport mode. So then from there we can turn ABS on to rotor track mode. Sport mode has that limited so we can't. We can only have one thing. Map, you can change the map from road to sport. We'll leave it on sport. TC is on sport too. Now, while I like all this electronic adjustability, the menu functionality and the display on this thing is, it looks nice, but it's very hard to use. It takes a long time to figure out which buttons do what, and it's a very clunky system. Uh, there's a motorcycle that we've ridden recently, <coughs> Honda, with the CRF 1000 1100 Africa Twin, and that system is even more complex and, and dizzy than this one, but this system isn't particularly very good, in my opinion. The traction control that, that this motorcycle has is also very rudimentary very very rudimentary the system doesn't employ an IMU instead it uses a more basic system with independent wheel speed sensors uh, throttle position gear position all of that more rudimentary traction control technology that companies were using you know 10 10 13 years ago and while I applaud Triumph at putting traction control on this motorcycle even in its least restrictive track track setting, 
it's still way too restrictive and it, it just doesn't it doesn't read the telemetry of the bike like a system like an IMU powered system it doesn't it just doesn't account for lean angle and the orientation of the motorcycle like an IMU powered bike so which really realistically riding to work riding on a street pace you're not really gonna miss it but we rode this motorcycle quite a bit on track uh, recently at Czech Walla Valley Raceway in SoCal and the even in the least track configuration track control setting you really can't ride this motorcycle very hard it pulls back the power super early and and it just really makes for a bike with a track control system that really doesn't work so good on the track but if you're a slower rider and you want to feel the performance of the motorcycle in a safe way without having it bite you this more rudimentary trash control, traction control system will be perfect for you. But if you're a haul ass type dude who wants to whale and have some degree of safety aid, it's, it's unusable. You have to disable it manually or else it'll just hold you back too much. Finally a green light guys. Listen to that engine sing. This Street Triple RS is outfitted with an electronic quick shifter so you can upshift and downshift without using the clutch. You just press down on the gear shift lever with your left foot and the motorcycle automatically downshifts or upshifts. It's awesome, it's slick. The timing of the quick shifter could be a little bit faster. You definitely feel a bit of a delay. There's other motorcycles out there that have faster quick shifters but it still gets the job done and it's better than no quick shifter these street triples have always been marvelously packaged motorcycles they're not too long they're not too wide they're very easy to cut through traffic on the scale this thing weighs i think right around 410 pounds with its 4.6 gallon fuel tank filled to the brim and it's very easy to wield on the street the motorcycle doesn't feel quite as nimble and agile as the 675 that motorcycle was crazy agile and light and small but this thing is still pretty impressive this RS spec street triple has a Showa BPF fork and an Olean's TTX type shock and the suspension on it does a good job of filtering out the road bumps. Definitely it has a little bit more firm calibration. Not overly firm but definitely a little bit more firm but I like it because the bike has really good pitch control when you're on the throttle, when you're on the brakes and still has decent ride quality. Uh, riding this thing at the track it's it's really an awesome mount to ride at the track just because the chassis is so stable and balanced and yet without even adjusting a clicker it still has a degree of good comfort and street aptitude another upgrade that this RS spec Triumph motorcycle has is the Brembo M50 brake calipers and this awesome MCS style master cylinder by Brembo. The M50 calipers are just, they're unbelievable. They're so rigid. They're so rigid and have so much power that, you know, they're just, they deliver a really good braking sensation and they don't overheat. You can use the brakes on this motorcycle very aggressively, repeatedly, 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 even on a hot day and they don't fade they don't heat heat up it's a marvelous system this master cylinder is just absolutely totally fantastic too i love being able to modify the leverage ratio we have 19 20 and 21 uh, configurations right now i have it in 21 which is the highest leverage ratio that gives the most amount of brake sensitivity when you press against the brake lever with your two front fingers and I like that. If you wanted to dull the sensation slightly, 
and have a little bit more pull before the brakes actuate, you can go down to the 19 setting. Cruising here, 73 miles per hour, this engine is just awesome. It sounds sweet, it's smooth. It has a little bit of vibration, but not too much. And it delivers a really favorable riding experience. Right now we have a main beam fault on the dash. Something is going on with the head beams of this motorcycle. Now it is safe to operate, the head beams are working but I don't think the bright headlight is working for whatever reason. So we have a fault in the headlight system. This motorcycle comes with a two year unlimited mile warranty. So if you have a problem with this motorcycle, Triumph stands behind this product and will get it fixed for you. Thank you Triumph. This display it has a dark mode which you can enable I enabled it the other day but I forgot how to do it like I said the switch gear navigation on this system is is kind of cumbersome it's hard to figure out the menu systems of course if you, if you study the menu you'll be able to figure it out but the whole point of having these menu systems and and and, and the navigation system on the motorcycle is to be able to figure it out quickly and that really uh, separates the men from the boys in the in the user interface department. The companies with the slick interface, so you can figure out using how to use everything without the manual. For the companies that that don't have the slick interface, you're poking and prodding. You have to work work the manual. So that's the real difference between the men from the boys. And away you go, guys. Finally, a turn. Like I said, we wailed on this bike at the track, and God, this bike handles so good. Trelli Diablo Super Corsa SP V3 tires on this motorcycle allow for an extreme level of wailing. Listen to that engine. Sorry, guys, I got up to speed for a second. That engine is just so fun. It's so playful. You're always going to want to ride this thing, you know, wide open, just because it's so awesome sounding when the engine's singing. No cruise control on this bike. I would love cruise control. All motorcycles that have ride-by-wire should have cruise control. Why would you not fit that on this on a motorcycle that has ride-by-wire? It's really easy to do. Heated grips. This motorcycle does not have heated grips either. You know, for $12,800, this bike should have cruise control and heated grips. We'll just go old school style and ride manually without cruise control. Mirrors! I like the aesthetic of these mirrors, how they mount cleanly to the bar end of the handlebar. Mirrors are a little buzzy at 82 miles per hour, but still they have a decent view of what's behind you. It just gets a little buzzy. And at this speed you can really feel the engine vibration through the handlebar and a little bit through the foot pegs. Again, I like this engine. It's zippy, it sounds cool, so I'm not really gonna knock the motorcycle for having this level of vibration, but it's definitely tangible, you can feel it. If you were riding on the freeway all day on this motorcycle, you'd probably be a little bit annoyed. But for versatile around town, zipping around and weekend canyon strafing, this motorcycle's pretty awesome. All right guys, we're on the freeway slog. We'll catch in with you in a little bit. All right, guys, we're just exiting the freeway and finally a turn. Yes. Gosh, this thing handles so good. We talked about the brakes, the awesome Brembo MCS master cylinder and the M50 calipers. The ABS programming on this bike is like the traction control, also a little bit root, more rudimentary and conservative in its programming. Road and track mode are the different ABS modes you can select. You cannot manually disable the ABS. The ABS is always on per European mandates for 2020 model year motorcycles. And 
the ABS programming for street use is, is just fine. Gets the job done, stops fast, no slips, no problems. But when you're wailing at track speeds, the ABS is just too intrusive. Also, the rear ABS, for whatever reason, it's got very odd calibration. When you're riding in track mode, it locks up for a second, then unlocks, and it's just, it's strange. We talked about Triumph having marvelous uh, ride dynamics and, and testing protocol, but for some reason, that that ABS track mode is kind of strange uh, in terms of rear brake orientation. All right, guys, we're just manually disabling the TC so we can do the wheelie test. Let's see if we're there. Uh, we got it off. Now we just have to go into track mode. So select that here. Hold it down. You can only go tr track mode when the vehicle is stopped, like it is now. Now we can do it. As you can see, the display automatically went to dark mode because of the ambient light sensor. We're in a shaded area. I love dark mode. Uh, I wish it, you can set it to be dark mode all the time, but it's not going to be so good for you guys to see when it's in dark mode, as you can see now. All right, guys, let's do the wheelie test. Yep, she wheelies real good. Nice job, Triumph. Good wheelies. Throttle response is a tad touchy. Like I said before, I love the throttle response on the mechanical cable actuation equipped Triumph Street Triple 675. That was my favorite. This thing is awesome because you can select different throttle responses and it works with the traction control and the ABS systems. It better integrates with those systems, but there's nothing like the good old fashioned feel of a mechanical throttle. Well guys, this was a fun ride on the Street Triple RS. We're here at the office. Let's wrap things up real quick. All right, guys, here it is. Triumphs 2020 Street Triple RS. I really like these motorcycles. If you're looking for a good, old-fashioned, naked, upright, sport-orientated street bike, these Triumph Street Triples are it. They sound cool. They have excellent riding dynamic, and they are maneuverable and very comfortable. Styling, eh, styling's a little bit too awkward for me. I really don't like that appendage front uh, headlight fairing. Um, so that would be kind of a deal breaker for me. Let's do All right, guys, let's do some Q&A real quick. Right to the top. How is it on the freeway for commuting? It is okay. You know, the seat's comfortable. Ergonomics are nice. They're not too too cramped. Uh, very well balanced. Suspension has good ride quality. A little bit more firm damping settings than past street triples, but still decent. The engine does have a little bit of vibration at the speed. The gearing's a little low too, so this thing does have some buzz at freeway. Uh, it's doable though. You know, based on how versatile this motorcycle it is and how fun it is to ride in the canyons, I could totally live with this buzziness at the freeway, on the freeway. That bike is hideous. Yes, this motorcycle does not look awesome at all. Triumph de definitely needs to change the appearance of these street triples. We love that they're sticking to the script of the Triumph street and speed lineup. We like that, that they're sticking to it, but they need to update it and make it look prettier because it looks hideous. All right, also is the pillion seat usable? This RS comes with that stock seat cowl for one person riding, but when you purchase this RS, it also comes with a passenger seat. Uh, also of note, there's a little bit of storage underneath that passenger seat, which is nice. A lot of bikes don't have any storage. This bike does. That passenger seat is pretty good. You know, it's got decent support and decent width. You could carry a passenger on this bike, no problem. Does it wheelie? This bike wheelies really well. It wheelies super good. It's balanced in the air. The rear brake is strong, easy to actuate. The quick shifter allows you to grab up shifts while you're in the air. This bike wheelies really well, but it doesn't wheelie quite as good as its predecessor, the Triumph Street Triple 675. That bike was crazy good at, at wheeling. 
Would you buy this bike or the new Duke? I would buy the new Duke, no question. The new Duke blows this thing out of the water. It's not even close. All right. The 890 Duke R, that is. Triumph Street Triple RS or BMW F900R. I love the BMW. It's $3,000 cheaper than this bike. You know, I'd probably buy the BMW. But you got to remember this bike's got an extra cylinder. Three cylinders instead of two cylinders. It'd be close. You know, the engine in this bike blows the F900R away. But, you know, saving $3,000 is saving $3,000. You can decide. Does this come with Sport or Sport Touring Tire Stock? This comes with Pirelli's fantastic Diablo Super Corsa SP V3 tires. These tires are fantastic. You can wail on them. They deliver good ride quality. They heat up tremendously fast. The only bad thing about these tires is they wear out very quickly. How do you like the ergonomics? I'm six foot two. I sat on one at my local dealership. My whole lower body was really cramped. This bike to me is ergonomically well proportioned. There's a decent amount of leg room, decent amount of room in the seat. I'm six foot tall. I would say this motorcycle is ergonomically pretty comfortable. If you're a tall guy, 6'2", you might be on the upper edge of that ergonomic spectrum, but I say it, it isn't bad. There are other bikes in the category that have even more spacious ergonomics. So just keep that in mind. Still the best naked bike in the market? No, it is not the best naked bike in the market in this segment anymore. It was for a long time. Those days have, have ended, unfortunately. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this edition of the 2020 Triumph Street Triple RS MC Commute. As always, make sure to surf on over to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all of our written content is published. Take a poke around that website. Let us know what you, you think about things. And again, thank you for watching this video. And we'll see you guys next time.